How's it going guys? Welcome back to the Blue Shifting and welcome back to Steins Gate Zero. Last time we were here, we had some interesting twists come up. First off, we've jumped ahead in the timeline. We're now in the summer, the pretty much a year after the death of Kudisu. Um, this, we had some interesting kind of blow in. We finally have Kagari, who's apparently going to become important now. And she's intercepted Moika. She's like nursing her back to health and has convinced her that she is now FB. Though Moika obviously didn't know that. She's obviously been abandoned by the rounders. Kind of similar to what happened to the Alpha World line when she failed to get the IBN 5100 for them. So in this timeline, she's also being abandoned. But instead of her just being kind of left to fend for herself, it looks like somebody else is going to take over manipulating her. Kagami. Kagari. I can't, I can't stop saying Kagami. I'm sorry. Kagari. So I have no idea what's going on with her. However, she did mention how she could hear the voice of God. In her childhood, it told her to protect Miri. And now she's wondering if, if God will talk to her again. And that makes me think that there might be a connection between her and the fanatic that charged us down inside the um, parking garage and tried to kill um, Dr. Leskin and Maho and potentially... Okabe, but I'm guessing now that that might not have been the case. It might have been just kind of a happy accident. Um, other than that, it looks like there's more research being done on the people who have the reading Steiner, at least the minor form of it. And Dr. Leskinen apparently is back in Japan to help out with this research, which makes sense considering that he's the head of a highly advanced uh, group of uh, effectively neurosurgeons and neurobiologists. So if there's going to be a strange condition where the minds and dreams and memories of people seem to be like united on the same points of an alternate potential timeline, and if the America understands that there is the potential for an existing time machine and that Russia's working on it, kind of makes sense that they'd be doing a lot more intensive research now that they have some ground to work with. So we're going to see what's going on here, and we'll have to see how Okabe fixes into all of it and where this is going to lead us. So, now it's getting exciting. I have no idea what to expect, but let's just jump in and see how it goes. <clears throat> Across the lobby, I see an old Japanese doctor in a white coat and a big man in a suit who is frantically trying to talk to him. Oh. Yep. I'd seen the man in the suit before. Well, I think we all have. <laughs> Actually, it was the man I knew well. Let's <laughs> get Hurry over. Oh yeah, I'm sure he knows you too. He must have been wearing his translator because he was communicating with the old doctor in Japanese. Dr. Leskinen's face quickly broke into a smile when he saw me. Oh, Rintaro! <laughs> his voice was so loud that everyone in the lobby, doctors, nurses, staff, and even the patients started to look at me. Yeah, I, I also worry about this myself. I have a naturally projective voice, and especially if I'm excited, I tend to just kind of project. So that's going to be one thing. It's going to probably draw a lot of attention to myself if I'm ever in Japan. It's going to be just like, ho ho ho, hi! And it'll be like, take it down a notch. My wife does that to me all the time. But Dr. Leskinen didn't seem to notice them as he ran over. He was like a giant American football player racing for a touchdown. <laughs> Don't kill me! <laughs> My cries went unheard as Dr. Leskinen tackled me and pulled me up. Did he literally tackled you? Fetch! Then he switched from football player to pro wrestler and he swung me up and down. I felt like I was a little child. There was nothing I could do to resist him and flung me around. A moment later, he noticed the cold stares of the people around us and finally released me. He's such a bro. Yeah, just, just a touch. Jeez, Dr. Leskinen bowed to the people around him in apology. The doctor that Professor Leskinen had been talking to was staring at me suspiciously. Uh, it I was I wasn't sure exactly what to tell him. It wasn't like he was really my professor. Whoa! Fetch, man! Like, like you've already put that all in the works? Wow. 
ビクトル・ポンドリア大学かねこれは驚いた I looked over Dr. Leskin and questioning me, but he just gave me a mischievous smile. This guy, <laughs> he really was such a kid. I love him. He's like, he's like that best friend you always want. You're half ashamed of him, but at the same time, you just love him to pieces. Nice. <laughs> After the doctors left, I sighed loudly enough for Professor Leskin to hear me. Oh, wow. Oh, wow. I don't think that's a lie, Okabe. Oh, yeah. What does she want? You know, he fully intends to bring you overseas, man. Tashkani, Kugatskara, Wagako no Gakse, Toaitaga, Nanimo, Kotoshi no Kugatskara Toaitanayo. Ah, sorry, Tom Nanikai. Kimiwa Kiku, Wagako ni Kuru Jishin and Nanokana. Dataras Koshi Zanendaga. Oh, fetch. He really was like a little kid, completely shameless. But still, it was hard to hate him. Demo, Odorokimasta. Masaka Kyojiga, Mata Nipon Nikitir Nante. It had been five months since I'd seen him off in uh, Narita. I looked around for Maho, but I didn't see her anywhere. Winter wa Tokoka Guai demo Warui no Kai? Chirio de Kokoni? Ah, yeah, Chigaimasa. New in Stere Yuji no Mimai de. Ah, so ka, so wa yoka. Ea, so no Yuji ni tote wa yoko naika. Moshiwakanai. Yeah. At least he caught himself. It's absolutely true. It's like, oh, that's good. Oh, wait, wait. No, it's not good. Ah, <laughs> uh, yeah. Hospital's one of those places you never want to be. And you know, you do want anyone you know to have to be there. But you're grateful that they're there. So, the Kyonji Koso, Nippon no Bioin de Nanyo. Dr. Leskinen brought his face close to mine and whispered so the people around us couldn't hear him. Kimi mo shiteiru daro. Le no Shingata no en no ken da yo. Yeah, yeah. Oh. See, and this is the here's an interesting idea right here, because Okabe really probably could open the door for him a little bit here if they trust him. But Dr. Leskin didn't trust him. And with that trust, and with the Amadeus program, once again. Ooh. I remember I had my theory before about how the Amadeus program, if they scanned Okabe's brain and they uploaded a personality copy of himself into the computer, how they might be able to recreate the time loop machine. That's one potential danger. However, once again, I want to reiterate that at the very least that program could confirm everything he said. Also though, I'm a little worried. Okabe is kind of unstable right now. If we scanned his brain, upload it to a computer, and force it to have its own life in the computer, but it remembers specifically like murder and Kurisu, would it remain stable? Or would that AI lose control? I mean, Okabe barely keeps control, but that's because he has close friends and a good support system. I don't think an AI program would, especially when one of the AI programs it could interact with fairly, like, frequently would be Kurisu. Oh, that'd be a, that could be a big mess. But at the same time, like, it really could corroborate and give them the data they need. But again, it's one of those same questions where it's like, is the data worth giving out there? I mean, the whole point is perpetuating a war between Russia and America. Like, that's what's going to make everything go so bad. I mean, you could try and make a case saying that if you just let Russia get all the power and let them have control of the time machine, that it would mean less death. But at the same time, I just, I, I can't see that. That would just lead to a future like CERNs. So, I don't know. There's really no good path forward, is there? Besides the Steins Gate option. Gotcha. I wonder Dr. Leskin might be in danger here actually. Now there was a world I didn't word I didn't expect to hear. I explained that my friend was here because they thought she might have this have the disease. Yeah. 
えああクリスマスパーティーで会ってましたねうんうん実は私が新型の面に興味を持ったのもあのパリがきっかけでねあいや、cause it's lots of weird stuff happened then 君と勝美が揃って倒れただろう。Uh、oh um can we keep that quiet <laughs> he was right actually in my case I've been sent to that other world line 勝美には何日か前に再会したんだけどね私にも何度か噛みついてきてよどうしてまた入院させられるんだ私は元気なのにってね、yeah. そ,そうでしたかもう少し協力的になってくれると嬉しいとリンタロウからも伝えておいてくれないかい、hmm. ああ実際のところキャツミだけでなくすべての患者に申し訳ないという気持ちはあるんだ我々も日本の医師団も研究を進めてはいるんだけどねどうにも下せない検索結果ばかりで困り果てているのさ。Right. Dr. Leskin is usually chipper expression darkened. The man was such a ball of vitality that I hadn't noticed until then, but when his smile disappeared, I could see wrinkles that formed in his face from exhaustion. He must have been working hard, like he said. 正直、最初はどの医師もこれほど不可解な病気だとは思っていなかったらしいんだけどね。うん。<笑> right. うんどうしたんだ、ウィンターロー。はあ。えっと。その何か気になることでもいえ。Come on, Okabe, you gotta make a choice whether you tell him or not. 俺は医学生じゃないのでさっぱりです。I was just about to tell him about my reading Steiner, but in the end, I couldn't. If my uninformed opinion was wrong, it could cost the less of a lot of his patients their lives. I couldn't tell him what I didn't have any proof. And then his face drew close to mine again. Tokoro de Sono Katsumiga Naka Naka Kyomi Bukai Koto Ite Tandayo. Uh oh. Jibun Tachua Bioki Janai Betsno Sekai no Deki Goto Yume de Miru no Yokuga Aru Taketa Toka Natoka. Okay. Okay. Okabe, tell him. If I get to choose. Tell him. I know it's probably a terrible option, but tell him! <laughs> I told her not to say anything about it. Could she not help it? This was bad. They might start to doubt her sanity. Eto. Nakase san wa, sono. Totemo. Sozo ryuk ga takumashi to yu ka. SF to ka, anime to ka, daisuki desu kara. Ta no heiko sekai o kanchi dekir chikara nante. 多分趣味の影響で口にしただけじゃないかと思いますうーん world, another world which exists parallel to our own in another space time has the same dimensions as our own world and sometimes the people and objects within it are the exact same place as our own parallel worlds are interesting I actually think that the model of world lines here is a bit more realistic than just the I don't know there's the belief of the um The, like, an effective unlimited multiverse, the idea that there are parallel worlds that exist in infinitum, so there are no end to them, and they exist all in parallel tangents. Where, like, you got if you could travel between them, each one would have slight differences where slightly different choices were made, and eventually you'd get to worlds that were just bananas, like an earth where the dinosaurs still walked the earth,、uh, still walked and lived, or a world made entirely of shrimp. You know, I've heard that one before. What, 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 what was that in? I can't remember. Some TV show. I talked about like a world of infinite shrimp. <laughs> oh, it might have been Buffy the Vampire Slayer, actually, if I think about it. <laughs> yeah, I think that was it. <laughs> good show, good show. Anyway,、um, the many worlds theory, effectively. Now, while we do have evidence that supports the idea that higher or lower dimensions exist and that they kind of have to in order to make some of the math of the quantum realities that we understand work, which we are not 100% on, by the way, it's still. Kind of like it's, it's hard to prove quantum theory at all, but the math says that that's so far kind of the best grasp we have. But 
like the idea that they examine here with world lines has a little credence to it. I don't think it's like something that we have any maths that can actually prove or support. But the concept of there being one true like world line, one active timeline, but that there are other dimensions where different choices or different key events happen and that those lay close to and are kind of tangible, but there would be, if you could actually visit these world lines without like bringing the entire world line into that flow of the, of the, of the current of time, I guess you could say, like without bringing the whole passage into that world, you would find a very empty blank place where there's not really anything actually happening. It's more of a possibility space. Um, Schrodinger's got cats a terrible example of this, but the it is an idea. It's like a place that exists and doesn't exist at the same time. Um, that that's something that's interesting to me because there could be many worlds. There could be many worlds, but I think that the world line theory or something kind of similar to this is actually a bit more. I don't know. I don't, I don't explain this, and this is getting into personal personal belief, this is where you start having science that starts to tiptoe into philosophy and getting really interesting and ex existential. But my, I, I'm a bit more in line with this world line type of thinking because it has this expectation that there are multiple dimensions, but that dimensions coexist without interfering with each other. Rather, they are representative of the of focal points. And there's an infinite number of them effectively and various stability in between them, and that quantum particles can interact with them, but that there's essentially only one active world line. That, um, because otherwise we would, I don't know, there would be a bit more, I think there would be more evidence than we've seen of uh, potential rifts. Like, I mean, it sounds science fiction-y, but I mean, we've seen, we see titanic forces all the time. Black holes literally rip apart space-time as we understand it. And perhaps it's just there's stuff there we can't see, but I feel like we do see enough that kind of accounts for a closed system, essentially. There can't truly be a closed system because of the way the particle quantum worlds work, but it's a balanced system, wherein stuff quantumly leaps through space and time and seems to blink out of existence. It either reappears or something equivalent appears in its place. Thus, there's the balance there. Like, obviously, there, there appears to be that things can go somewhere and come back. But that could just be whatever's beyond the universe. I mean, I don't think that the universe is all there is. I think that there was something around before the universe bubble exploded. And that there is something beyond it. But it's beyond space, matter, and energy. And thus, it's never something that we could physically travel to. Does that make sense? <coughs> Excuse me. I got a, a cough. I got sick this weekend, and I'm apparently I'm gonna have a lingering cough. So get ready for lots of that. But um, no, this this kind of out of phase idea. I don't know. It really is a tough thing to wrap my mind around, and that's what makes it difficult to even talk about. But there's so much more to the universe than we understand, and that's pretty that's pretty much the biggest problem. However, the many worlds, maybe I just have a philosophical like trouble with the fact that if the many world line, many worlds theory does, is proves to be true, then essentially everything we do doesn't really matter. We're just actors on a stage rolling the proverbial dice on what choices we end up making that essentially if we were to repeat a day with no memory of the first time we went through the day, then we would have one slight thing that we did we do a little bit differently, and that that actually exists somewhere. Essentially meaning that whatever your life is, is just one part of infinitum, and that ultimately there's no, no it doesn't matter. And maybe there that is, that's a bit too nihilistic for me. I'm an optimistic nihilist, where I do think that the net value of what we do in the scale of the universe and its ultimate heat death will mean nothing. But that the current things that we do now and the influences that we have, I think they do have matter. I think they do have an influence of some kind that I can't understand completely complexity of. But I believe there is value to it. And the infinite world lines theory, the many worlds theory, kind of essentially trivializes that even further. 
And so why, maybe, maybe that's the only reason why I'm not a huge fan of it. Maybe I just find it distasteful. But to be fair, there's as much evidence for that as there is for world lines, or there is for nothing, really, essentially. <laughs> there's, there's just nothing but speculation at this point. So, anyway, my long rant short, I would have to say that I like the approach to this. Especially because it accounts for this idea that the actions that people take matter. Despite the fact that the world line can be changed, people's choices still have a important legacy based on what happens in the timeline. Anyway. Actually, <laughs> Oh, uh, calm down, you. I tried my best to come up with excuses, but Dr. Leskinen still seemed concerned. だけどね、私も治療プロジェクトに参加して驚いたんだが、確かにこの病の特徴として多くの患者が夢を共有する不可思議な現象が起こっているんだ。いや。集団幻覚に近いのかとも思って。今調べているんだけどね。どうなんだろう。こんなことは初めてでね。科学的には今のところ解が導けない。Come on, I think we have to tell him. I I don't know, like it's one of those things again where I don't know what the repercussions would be of telling him, but part of, I really think that we kind of, someone needs to know. If something happens to us and it's just going to I don't know. I feel like somebody needs to know. Come on, Okabe. 正直非科学的という言葉が一番しっくりくるくらいだよ。それこそ平行世界とか前世の記憶とかね。そうですか。君も勝美から色々と話を聞いてくれると助かるよ。医者に言えないことでも友人になら話すだろうしね。はい。一応心がけておきます。Maybe we could talk to Maho about it and help her put her on the right track at least. さて、リンタロー、それはそれとして確認だ。Okay. Dr. Leskinen was looking over my shoulder. Christmas パーティーの時にも感じたんだけれど、君のガールフレンドたちはキュートなお嬢さんばかりだね。Oh, Dr. Leskinen, come on, you're too old for this. Eh? It's true, though. Okabe has an inordinate amount of female companions. I turned around and saw that Mayuri, Kate, uh, Kada, and Yuki had all stood up from the sofa and were looking at me. So, and it's funny, okay. I'm not saying I was like Okabe at all, but at the same time, I do have an interesting... My life was very strange in a lot of ways, and one of the ways was the fact that I was very much on more talking and close friendships with girls than guys. I just, I don't know, I was comfortable with girls, like all growing up, even from when I was a little kid. My mom, like, uh, my mom has a picture, I've mentioned this before, my mom has a picture of me on my sixth birthday, no, no, it was my fourth birthday or fifth birthday, something like that. And she, uh, we invited all my friends for my birthday party, and <laughs> there's only one guy and like seven girls. <laughs> it was just that's who came, that's who my friends were, and so it's like, and that's just always how it's been. I mean, I definitely have my my good bro friends, the bromances, and all that good stuff, but like, they're definitely a bit more of the few and far between. Like Okabe too. Like, I'm not sure I was. I wasn't close to all of the girls, but they all considered me a friend, and I them, and I also tended to be. Oh man, it's good. Like I was always the nice guy to talk to, you know. Like so, I always was in on stuff and talking things out and just being emotionally there and a shoulder to cry on, um, which I actually thoroughly enjoyed. It's something I I was very happy to be a part of. Um, I was able to be there for a lot of friends, and I've mentioned this before, but as crazy as it is even is for me to recall it, I actually didn't have trouble with the dating scene either. Was it exactly how I wanted, and did I always go out with the people I crushed on? No, actually, very often not. But it wasn't like I wasn't dating people pretty regularly. I went to pretty much all the school dances. Um, when it was the girls' choice dances, I almost always got asked, and when I asked, almost always the girl I would ask would say yes. You know, and like you know, I'd had enough. I had my share of girlfriends, and 
you know and so like i don't know i'm I'm, an, I'm as much a normie as anyone else <laughs> like as much as like i look back at myself and i'm like how on earth would i be considered a normie because i was just not i was super geeky and super shy and super like i just didn't take risks of any kind and yet i didn't have any trouble so yeah it, ironically okabe and i have a lot in common <laughs> When they saw Dr. Leskin and was looking at them, they waved. His words were so surprising, I couldn't think of anything to say. Maho would often call this middle-aged man a mischievous boy, and that was exactly the look he had on his face. I love you, Dr. Leskin, and you're so, you're so awesome. Yeah, you do. Wait, what? What? Oh, Maho? Is Maho- did Maho ask you to spy on me? <laughs> no. Uh, uh, huh? Dr. Leskin then turned to walk away before I could figure out what he meant. Sorry, Rintaro. I don't want to talk a little bit more to So, okay. From what I gathered from that question, I think that he's- not so subtly trying to scout out for Maho. I'm guessing Maho probably talks about uh, Okabe probably a lot more than she realizes, and it might be why Dr. Le uh, Dr. Leskinen and it might be like kind of on team like Okabe slash Maho. Uh, he might be shipping him hard, and then I'm also guessing that Amadeus is kind of nudging him as well, which he's I'm sure he's thrilled about. But I think Dr. Leskinen's kind of like, well, I mean, he's got lots of very pretty girls around him, so I'm like, I, maybe I should find out for sure if he's interested in any of them or not. And this is his brilliant way of determining that. <laughs><笑><笑> Oh my gosh, okay. Dr. Leskinen, please. Like, it's already sounding creepy enough as it is. And you're in Japan. Like, even in America, that would be kind of definitely crossing a line, considering you're an educator. But even then, in Japan, it's gotta be way worse. Oh, uh, hi. Mayuri and the others came over to me as I watched him go. There was no way I could tell the girls what Dr. Leskinen and I were just talking about. Yeah, nope, nope, no bueno. Oh, look at all the ads, too. Like, it looks so real, it's creepy. Except it's not truly real because there's no way there'd be a subway that's empty in Japan. <laughs> Like, not in Tokyo or anywhere close to it. And this is obviously, with all these ads, I'm guessing it'd be close to Akiya, but that's Chaos Child! Oh, nice, smart, plug in your own cut game in your game. And I'm sure there's other references here that the actual stuff. I mean, the art looks too specific to be anything but. Is that Chaos Child on the right, too? It kind of might, it might be. Like, just the more Japanese official one that kind of looks similar. Yeah, those two characters look kind of same, the same. Anyway, after Fubuki's exam was over, we went to her room and listened to her complain, and then the visit was over. Just like Dr. Leskinen had said, she looked just fine. She told us she was ready to leave the hospital and jog all the way home. Miri and the others were relieved, but I felt worried. Did I need to talk to Dr. Leskinen about reading Steiner after all? Can we call him? No, oh, I can't call Maho. Like, if, if, if Kurishu is, is gone, I, I could be on Team Maho, but how would I explain it? It might be a better idea to talk to Maho and have her explain it to him. That's what I thought. Like, can we call her now? Maho! I couldn't come to an answer right away. 
We said goodbye to Ka uh, Kaeda and Yuki and at the stations on the way back. Before we got to Ik Ik Ikebukuro, I remembered to take out my phone and open it to a web browser. I went to at channel, eager to see how she'd responded to the bait I spread this afternoon. Oh, oh fetch! I put my hand over my mouth to stifle the noise. Oh. Uh, that nothing, nothing. Nayuri had been standing to me, next to me and was leaning over my, my look, look, leaning over at my screen. All right. I I fished her up. All right. It was Fitzgerald and uh, Lorenz who based the hypothesis of the experiment. Einstein himself said, "Up, oh, screw." It. And uh, Einstein himself said, it had "Nothing to do with the series. You don't even know that. How ignorant are you?" Ooh. <laughs> you got the. Oh man, I didn't think it would go this well. The timestamp was from just thirty minutes ago. I decided to respond immediately using the same name, Salieri's neighbor. You're the ignorant one. <laughs> in a letter, in a letter written before his death, Einstein said that he was aware of Meckelson's and Morley's experiment. I posted and then reloaded the thread. There was already a response from her. She is a computer. I know that. Duh. All he said was that he knew of the experiment. Obviously, Einstein used um, Fezziwe experiment and stellar abbreviation to come up with a theory of relativity. The time lag between the posts was just 21 seconds. It was kind of irritating to have her come at me so hard. It was as if she was trying to insult me as a person. Well, I was the one who deliberately written a mistake, so I should have expected it. Plus, it's at channel. I mean, it's kind of what happens when you post on the internet. <laughs> they come at you hard. You just can't let anyone else win, can you? I see you haven't changed a bit. Ooh, now you, Mozart. Oh! oh, oh. <laughs> that's good, that's good. The Thread's other residents were probably confused, everyone except for her. Residents, regular users of the service, primarily refer to the frequent commenters on anonymous internet message boards. Miyuri had been watching our exchange and looked at me confused. Well, <laughs> I think. <laughs> now, now, now then, how would she reply to nickname Salieri's neighbor and a post I just wrote? I was curious, but there wasn't an immediate response like before. The train reached Ikibukuro Station. Yep. The train slid into the station and stopped. I reloaded the thread one more time before the doors opened, and there was a very short response from Kuri Gohan and Kamehameha. Who are you? <laughs> yep. That could be, and there could be no doubt now. And was this the uh, for the de uh, the answer from the depths? Imakita Industries. Like, what is that? That seems interesting. This Kuri Gohan and Kamiyamea was Kurisu. <laughs> Oh, hello, Suzaha. Now we're going to talk about the fact that the time machine is now effectively worthless, right? Oh, this is back in the past. It was a very hot day in 1998 when Suzaha said goodbye to Kagari Shina. She'd gone to get food and water from a local store. When she'd come back to the open hatch, Kagari was inside screaming. Oh, what? Uh-oh. She's trying to leave without her. She looked inside and saw that Kagari was slamming her tiny hands down on the control console. Omae, what are you doing? Yeah, I'd be kind of pissed. Fetch, man. This thing's important. <laughs> Kagari shrank back when she saw Suzaha. What's wrong? This is... This is... Why? I don't think so. But the door is open. Kagari started to cry. Sorry, 
、でも本当に怖かったんだだからそうかうん Suzaha relaxed her guard Kagari had PTSD from her time as a war orphan she hadn't fully recovered yet Miguri had once told her that she got very frightened in dark and cramped places it would make sense if waking up in the dark caused a panic attack and the time machine could only function with Suzaha's biometric authorization Someone of Kagari's size could, wouldn't be able to break the console either. You were in a shock of time and you were in a shock of time. So you were in a shock of time, but it was bad. It was bad. It was bad. Suzuha grabbed one of Kagari's tiny hands to help her up and then laid her outside the machine. Oh, it's hot. Yeah. Kagari, I'm going to make a promise. どんなことがあっても操縦席のスイッチに触ったりするな。いいな。う、うん。じゃあ、私は仕事にかかるから、お前はその辺で休んでるんだ。飲み物と食べ物は適当に食べていい。シュドハはカガリの provision she brought and went inside to poke her head through the cargo space under the control console. She connected the IBM 5100 she'd stored there to a portable terminal she'd brought from the future. Whoa, so she has one. Interesting. By all appearances, it was an early 2000s cell phone, but inside it was a miniaturized quantum computer from the year 2036. Of course, future Daru had made it himself. When she booted up the IBM 5100, rows of numbers started to appear on the screen. Guy was looking in from outside the time machine. 2000年問題は勉強したか Year 2000 problem. A problem where all computers would supposedly have errors after the year 2000. Oh, the Y2K. Almost all computers stored,、uh, stored only the last two digits of the year in order to save memory. For this reason, when 1999 became 2000, the computer's data would change from 99 to 00. Since the programs were never equipped to handle this, it was thought that the computers would treat the year as the year 1900 and malfunction. While the error of home users' computer would not be severe, issue and malfunction in a medical, financial, or military computer could cause disaster. For this reason, all the programs across the world were rewritten by hand starting in the mid 1990s. The process was successful on January 1st, 2000, came and went without serious incident. Oh, wait, I think there's something else in there actually. Unread. Oh, Imakida Industries. Yeah, so this is, this is that th the reference that was in that、um, text thing. Imakita Industries, net slang. Used to mean I just joined this thread and I'm not sure what's going on. Can someone explain it to me in three lines or less? So it's a pretty much it's, it's the、uh, TLDR. A play on the Japanese word Imakita Sangyo, which could mean either I just got here, give me three lines, or Imakita Industries. Interesting, okay. The more you know, and the more I cough. <laughs> Uh, yes, 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 why do you care? I'm not going to be able to do it. I'm not going to be able to do it. I'm not going to be able to do it. I'm not going to be able to do it. I'm not going to be able to do it. I'm not going to be able to do it. I'm not going to be able to do it. I'm not going to be able to do it. この IBN5100 というコンピューターなんだよ、huh. これには古いプログラム言語が搭載されてるんだけどそのプログラムの問題点を技術者たちが修正できなかったというよりそんな言語で書かれた重大なプログラムが存在すること自体全く知られてなかった Ooh. I wonder if that's real I doubt it but it sounds interesting 第三次世界大戦はタイムマシンの開発競争が発端なんだけどもしかすると2000年問題で発生したある事象とそれに付随する対立こそがもっと深い原因である可能性があるはあ She didn't expect a 10 year old like Kagari to understand this but she didn't feel like talking at the taking the time to explain しかも西暦2000年というのは特殊な年でね全ての世界線が一旦一つに収束してしまうらしいんだ。はあ。そう、OK、そう、そう、そう、そう、そう、そう、そう、そう、そう、そう、そう、そう、そう、そう、そう、そう、そう、そう、そう、そう、そう、そう、そう、そう、そう、そう、そう、そう、そう、そう、そ
No, she couldn't be. She didn't sound like... I, I was going to say, like, what if she's, like, a founder of the Rounders? But at the same time, it just doesn't seem likely, considering what she did with, with Moika. Right. She looked down at the terminal connected to the IBM 5100. Interesting. Right now, the terminal is converting the patch into the language used by the IBM 5100. The next step was to spread this program all around the world in the form of a virus. In the year 2000, problems that this era's engineers missed would completely disappear. The world word connect appeared on the terminal subscreen. Okay. Tsunagatta. ADSL. She'd been told that in Japan this era, ADSL was still the test phase, and most normal users connected to the internet by low speed dial up using ISDN. Alright, so ID ISDN, Integrated Service Digital Network, a completely digital network that used digital exchanges, relays, and subscriber lines. It was far faster than analog lines that were originally used by dial-up internet services, but the massively decreased after the introduction of the faster ADSL. An asymmetric digital subscriber line. A type of internet connection, ADSL uses telephone lines for high-speed data transmission in the early 2000s This quickly replaced ISDN as a de facto method of connecting to the internet. But in the later part of the decade, FTTH services using fiber optics became more popular. And the number of ADSL users has declined ever since. Yes. I never... I don't think I ever was part of anything that will use ISDN. Um, ADSL was the first internet that was introduced to my home when I was like a kid. Um, so I've, I have no idea what that would have been like. Probably would have been super sluggish based on the fact that it said that the dial-up was faster, and that was freaking turtles. But in major city areas like Akihabara, universities, labs, and some big computer companies were starting to use fiber optic broadband. Some of them were even using wireless LANs. Wow, dang, I didn't know that they were doing that way back then. Wireless LAN, a method of connecting to the internet and sending and receiving data without the use of a cable, which is Wi-Fi. Fiber optic broadband, high-speed, high-capacity internet connection that uses fiber optic cable, also called FTTH, fiber to the home, Instead of relying on existing telephone lines, it required the construction of a new communication network. For this reason, adoption has taken longer than ADSL. As of 2010, 35% of Japan still uses FTTH. Really? Wow. And Japan's kind of on the cutting edge. I'm guessing that they really... Oh, maybe not. That's fascinating. Shizaw cracked, uh, cracked her way into one of these. Dad had laughed when he said they were written. They were that said that with 2036 technology, cracking late 20th century tech security was a joke, but he'd been right. Yeah, I'm sure. Not really. Here's the thing: is it's hard for a little kid to grasp. It's hard for even us to grasp. But like, there's two types of changes you could make. We've established that this universe can sustain an actual change. Without that, any changes to the timeline you make already have been made because it already happened, and the timeline you're currently on exists that way. You have to leave that timeline in order to make a change in an alternate version of the world. So the mini worlds theory can account for that, which is why if there is time travel, that's the most likely way it actually happens, is that you actually aren't traveling back in your own timeline, you just travel to an alternate timeline that begins at the point when you jump into it. Because as soon as you jump into it, your very presence will change everything. Even if it's a tiny change, it'll change things. And so that would be an alternate an alternate world path. But remember, if you believe in the many worlds theory, that also technically has already happened. And so it's either somebody jumps away from your world line, leaving it effectively the same, except for that person's now vanished, or they're jumping, it, it's a world line where they jumped into it and thus they already had done everything. Now this world line can be changed and altered because world lines are very, a little different where you change something in the past and the entire continuum snaps back into, like, uh, resets itself if it needs to into the new state. So, but then again, because they don't have reading Steiner, at least we don't think they do, they would not know if the thing had been changed. 
Surprisingly, Gagari had gotten the gist of what Suzuha had just told her. Suddenly, the uneasy look on Kagari's face vanished. It was as if her soul had left its body. Suddenly, her face was expressionless, and her eyes were wide. Uh oh. Whoa, fetch. What? Okay. Kagari? What the fetch? Okay. What messages is she receiving? It's freaky. Oi. Kagari was acting strangely. Suspiciously, Suzuha reached her hand toward her. But she slipped past Suzuha's hand. And quicker than any child should be able to move, she slammed her shoulder straight into Suzanne's body. Oh, fetch. Uh. Suzanne was caught completely off guard. That's how fast it was. Gari's shoulder hit her in the solar plexus. <laughs> she bent over and collapsed onto the seat. Gari tore the terminal out of Suzanne's hands. The cables connecting it to the Ebony 5100 were ripped out, and the errors displayed on both screens. Kagari didn't answer the question. Instead, she grabbed the backpack that Suzuha had placed on the seat and spilled its contents onto the floor. There were MREs, spare parts, clothes, and a semi automatic pistol. Uh oh! Suzuha couldn't believe it. Kagari was going to try and pick it up. She forced herself to ignore the pain as she jumped into Kagari's body. Oh my gosh! But another unbelievably powerful body slam slam knocked her back. What the fetch is going on? <laughs> Something cold was pushed right up against her brow. I did she just time leap? Because it seems way too coordinated all of a sudden. <laughs> Gagari's tiny hands weren't shaking at all as they clutched the semi-automatic pistol. In the space of an instant, the safety on the gun had been flipped off. That's when Suzuha realized that this wasn't just a temper tantrum. Suzuha was the one who taught her how to use a gun. Uh-oh. That's why she knew that Kagari was perfectly calm. There was no hesitation in her eyes. Instead, Suzuha saw only resolve. Hmm. すでに過去に干渉してる。世界線だって連れてしまってるはずだ。あそこに戻れる可能性は低く。うるさい、うるさい、うるさい。かがりはママを絶対に助けるんだ。うん。この世界を消すなんてダメだよ。絶対にやら
Ataru was sitting at the computer next to Suza Han talking to his monitor. The monitor was displaying a video chat screen. On the screen was a young girl dressed in slovenly fashion. <clears throat> no, a proper, full, fully grown lady. <laughs> oh, hi, oh. oh, okay. This might actually have to be the thumbnail here, because that's just, that's, that's awesome. <laughs> It was 8.30 p.m. in the Future Gadget Lab in Akihabara. Meanwhile, Victor Krondra, uh, Krondria was an hour off from, the usual due, off from usual due to the daylight savings time. It was around 7.30 a.m. Hiyajo-san, daijoubu? Kono jikun deshi neoki shou. Maho was a mess. Aww. Her hair was never combed right, but her eyes were bloodshot. Her gaze was wandering. The spots under her eyes were too dark for the little bit of makeup she'd applied to cover them up. Her cheeks were sunken, which made her look even tired than usual. Tinier than usual. On top of all that, her skin was terribly pale. She looked like something out of a zombie movie. Oh. She's gonna punch you through the screen, man. Normally, she would have gotten upset at Itari's joke. But either she'd gotten used to it or simply given up because she said nothing. The IBM 5100? Itara glanced towards the development room, past the curtain in the back of the lab. Oh, that's a terrible idea! Right now, he was working with Maho to recreate what Okabe had called the Time Leap Machine. Are you freaking serious? Oh my gosh. Why? Why? Why would you do that? Hmm. Was it the, uh, the, the TV downstairs that they don't have? But I feel like it was still doing stuff. No, I guess it was just kind of a normal microwave with, with, with that TV wasn't on. So... No, no! He would rip it apart with his bare hands. <laughs> Yeah, yo, I'm kind of upset. Oh man, like, ugh, that's an interesting look. In fact, it almost been a year since she first tried and failed. There was a moment of silence. <laughs> Good grief. Hmm. Maho's whole body jerked as she almost fell out of her chair. あ、危なかった。出勤前なのに二度寝してしまうところだった。つうか、頑張りすぎだよ。無理して体壊したら意味なくね。このくらい平気よ。というか、これだけやってもまだ天才にはかなわないんだから。ああ。そんなことないと思
もう一つある。うん。She's how I looked at Otaro. マイから調べてほしいって頼まれてた件について。何か分かったのはっきりしたことはまだ。そう。あちこちのネットワークに強引に侵入したりとかギリギリまではやってみたんだよ別に責めたりしないわ今分かっていることを教えてちょうだいいやむしろ激しく罵倒とかしてくれてオーケーなわけだが<笑> ah, I curse you hand. I don't know why I did that. Go back. 父さん早くして時間が来ちゃうからほいほい Okay. Natara opened a different window on the monitor. He displayed one of the text files in it. It was a, record, it was a record of the information Natara and Shizuha had collected. Eto, Mazu, Mahotan Tachiga, Hotel no Chica Chusha Jude, or so it a jikin. Right. Kesat no Hapio dato, Shinko Karto Kyodan no Tokoga, Iho Yakubutsu, Tskata Suenit, the Hanashini Natter Kedo. Are. Ah, fetch! Stop it, hand! Mazu, I know who's so dava. うそ犯人の身元は警察発表通り某大学の准教授。Interesting。これはいいんだけどさ、そいつが宗教団体に所属してたっつう事実がこれっぽっちも出てこないんだよね。See, こう案が隠し持ってる教団員のデータにもアクセスしてみたから確定。捏造ってことなのね。Yep。アットチャンネルとか見てるとさ、信者っぽい人が時々書き込するんだよね。教団は無実だとか陰謀だとかそうすると一
not uh, as committed as you should be, and that's it's it's not good. Oh yes. Oh yes. Oh yeah. It's spades. Yeah, we can actually not, now everybody can do that, which means people have been able to do that for a while now. Officially, internet protocol. However, the term IP is often mistaken for it to describe an IP address. An IP address is essentially an ID number given to a computer to allow it to exchange information via the internet or a LAN. The internet protocol is a method and standard used to exchange that information. And then uh, you can get uh, VPNs, I think, where you route your IP through a, like a, like a kind of a ghost IP, where uh, as long as the their data banks aren't uh, compromised, it makes it a little more safe. <sighs> but they're not flawless. Yeah, I bet. Interesting. So it's probably the Russians, huh? The police have called it a fight between foreign mafias trying to expand their territory in Japan. The media never questioned the story at all. Even the people on the, bo on the boards of the famously skeptical Ad Channel believed everything they were told. Of course, there was no mention whatsoever of Russians or CERN. です。試しに目撃者を装って、ロシアの特殊部隊を見たって連れ立ててみたんだよね。そしたらまあすごいのなんの。炎上しすぎてびっくりしたお。わあ。あの時は思わず鉱石員の本名から会社名まで全部晒
Maho stood up and walked towards the closet without turning off the camera. She vanished from view, but a moment later... <laughs> she must have seen how terrible she looked because she looked at a very unfeminine scream. They relaxed for a moment after turning off the video chat. Suzu thought back to the time before she'd become a time traveler. She did it every time she got off the video chat with Maho. Interesting. It was after Maho had gone back to America that she'd volunteered to help Suzuha and Itaru with the time machine. That meant that when Itaru Hishida completed the time machine 25 years from now, Maho Hi Hiyajo must have contributed in some way. But. Uh oh. あんまり未来のことを言うのはまずいんだけど、父さんの仲間にそんな名前の人いなかったんだよね。え、そうなん？うん。ということはさ、どこかのタイミングで開発メンバーから抜けるってことなんじゃないかな。うん。Or自分の意思なのか、それ以外の外的要因なのかはわからないけど、少なくとも開発の主要メンバーじゃなかったと思う。そうなのか、かなり頼もしい人だけどな。こんなことを言いたくはないけど、どこかのスパイという可能性もある。
Mm. How dare you? Mm. Maybe this was a, ma a more important problem than the time machine. Suzaha so brought her hands up to her head. いい、いい、Suddenly there was a sad look in Atara's eyes. そういう顔しない。約束したはずだよ。もう迷うのはやめにしようって。the past six months, Suza had been thinking about whether it was really right to erase this world. But in the end, it was none, of the other, none other than Atara who had pushed her to go ahead. She couldn't bear to see his, her father so desperate, so she patted his broad back. By the way, Daru has like a neck of a freaking elephant. My gosh. で、相手たら映画に誘う。ぎ、いきなりハードル高すぎ。高すぎでも何でもいいから誘いなさい。いい。これは命令だからね。いや、いや、いや、いや、いや、いや、いや、いや、いや、いや、いや、いや、いや、
but there was no dust and there was no stains. Instead, it shone brightly as if the owner had put a lot of effort into taking good care of it. The chain was so old that part of it had snapped off. That probably was how it got dropped. Come on, remember. She stared at the green Upa in Natara's hands. And then, in her mind, she heard a young girl scream. Yep. There it was! It was freaking right in front of her! Fetch! That might have been in the freaking thumbnail, too! Man, she held onto that Upa for a long time. Oh my gosh. She gasped. A feeling of incredible terror raced down her spine. Kagami found her first. Not Kagami, Kagari. Kagari no ka. Oh no. Oh no. That was when she'd last seen it. August 13th, 2036. The day she'd gone into the time machine. That's when she'd seen this Upa. It was older and more worn now, but the more she remembered that day, the more certain she became. This was the Upa that Mayuri had given to Gagari. She'd seen Gagari holding it and crying to herself many times before. Oh. Oh, yeah. She found us. Yeah. And she might be here to try and destroy and finish the job she started. She probably was listening in too. Satisfied, she headed off to take a shower. Ever since then, her careful efforts to defend the time machine had paid off and she hadn't seen any sign of Kagari. She never, uh, she never thought she'd be watching the lab. いや、ちょっと考えれば当たり前のことだったんだ。あいつは私たちが主体図ゲートに到達するのを阻止しようとしてる。Right。この世界をなかったことにしたくないと思ってる。ということは私だけじゃなく。父さんのマークされてる。ああ、man。え、僕？まあ、父さんの命に危険はないとは思うんだ。Probably。Hopefully。世界線の設備を信じるなら、父さんは少なくとも2036年までは生きるはずだし、ただ、主体図ゲート到
Yuki. If she took out Yuki, Suzha wouldn't exist and thus she couldn't interfere with the timeline. And the rest of it would probably play out fairly similarly at least. You know, that might actually be what she's trying to do. I don't think she could pull it off though because we still have that kind of nebulous belief in the kind of continuity or, um, shoot, starts with a C, uh, the continuum kind of exerting control. Causality, that's what it was. Alright, Suza decided to keep the green Upa keychain. She softly ran her fingertips over it as she started stared at it. Also, Maho. Maho isn't involved anymore. Maho might be the key she tries to take out. She's in America, but doesn't seem like she will be for long. Hmm. Unfortunately. First off, your parents don't dictate who you become. Plenty of terrible people are born to good people. Secondly, she might have been raised by Mayuri, but she's fueled by a desire to protect Mayuri and the world in which they are related, and Suzuha also trained her effectively to be a killer, so... だと良かったんだけど。うん。私も前はそうなると信じてた。けど今の限りは多分。Yeah. From what she'd seen of the radio building, she could tell Kagari had definitely received professional combat training. It wasn't just simple self-defense techniques that she'd learned from Suzuha when she was a child, and she'd grown up. She'd been taught the cold techniques of a killer. There was no way to know where she'd be or what she'd been doing ever since she'd gone missing in 1998. Uh, but there was no doubt in Suzuha's mind that she was trying to ruin her plans. Well, that's fan freaking tastic. All right. Ah, oh, such a late episode already. Can I get that? Let's go a little bit longer. I kind of feel like something else is going to happen real quick. And yeah, hopefully there's nothing I have to censor here. So far, it's been a good game. Kind of. She's outside as she took her shower. Since it was summer, she set the water temperature low. It's barely any hotter than tap water. As long as the water was pouring down on her, she could feel like all the bad memories were being washed away. She slapped her cheeks with both hands and turned off the water. Gosh darn it, I couldn't help but instantly think what which cheeks, and I immediately hate myself for that. <laughs> the smell tiled the small tiled room suddenly became quiet. In the silence she vigorously toweled off her hair. This building was never intended for anyone to live in. Not only was there very little room, there wasn't even a place to change. It was small and there was no windows, and steam from the shower room built up, making it an unpleasant sauna in the summer. Supposedly, Taro and Okabe would sit naked next to the fans to get away from the heat and moisture. Of course, that was only when the girls, as well as Luka, Urushibara, went around. But Suzuha couldn't do that. There were those huge scars on her chest, and she was careless, and Yuki saw them. She'd have a big problem. So she, she, so she was always forced herself to change within the small space. Uh-oh. The second she left the shower room, she realized something was wrong. The lights were off in the, in, in the part behind the curtain where the lab room was. She was sure she had left all the light, lab lights on when she'd gone to take a shower. She didn't remember turning them off. Oh, fetch! She completely, she still completely naked, she flung open the curtain. <laughs> she dropped to the floor, ready to move. She could tell by the light from the shower room that there was no one else there. She didn't hear any breathing, and she didn't feel any other presence. Hmm, I don't think so. And then when she when he'd left, he turned off the lights? No, that couldn't be right. She looked around the room, saw that things had been moved in a way that an amateur wouldn't be able to notice. The tower's computer desks, the sofa area, the bookshelves, even the miniature kitchen. Someone had gone through them all. 
From the look of it, the same was probably true of the development room. Did she come back literally to look for the Upa? She's how I glanced over all the areas where she kept her guns. The closest was the sofa that she used as a bed. She'd wanted to have one easily available if she was attacked whilst she slept, so she'd cut out the back of the one side of the sofa cushion and hidden a suppressed semi-automatic pistol in it. Jeez. It was just a 32 caliber for self-defense, so it wouldn't do much again unless you had good aim. But it was small and relatively quiet, which made it the best choice for a place like this. She saw it tensed all her muscles, coiling like a spring, and slowly moved toward the sofa without making a sound. As she did, she tried to notice any changes in the surrounding area. There was a small sound in the development room. It was a tiny, tiny creaking of the floor, which you'd usually pay no mind. But that was more than enough for Suzaha. In an instant, she moved from the quiet into action. She cleared the distance to the sofa in a single movement and quickly drew her gun. She held it ready and slipped into the shadows of the refrigerator. From this position, she could barely see into the development room. Uh huh. Oh no, Moika. The room became silent again, but this time the intruder in the other room didn't try to hide their presence. Oh no, I don't like this. Suzaha threatened the intruder in a low voice, but the intruder seemed completely unconcerned as they exposed themselves to Suzaha's gaze. Don't do it, Maka. Don't do it. <laughs> the intruder was wearing a motorcycle suit just like before. Even the helmet was the same. The leather suit clung tightly to their skin, revealing a voluptuous and perfectly proportioned body. It's clearly a woman. Hmm. She's all pointed toward the entrance to the shower room. The shirt she'd taken off the wall was lying there on the floor. The girl in the motorcycle suit turned her head, but because the face mask was down, Suzaha couldn't read her expression. Don't worry, she wouldn't have one. Nah. No boy. The second she spoke, Kagari Shina was the first to move. She drew a de de deglossed military knife that she must have been hiding behind her back and closed the gap between herself and Suzaha in an instant. Suzaha pointed the gun at her legs and pulled the trigger, carefully aiming away from her vitals. She heard the small pop of the suppressed 32 and saw Kagari lose her balance and fall. Or she thought she did, but it was a feint. She had only pretended to lose her balance. In fact, she would changed direction and was heading for the shower room. It seemed her first goal was to get what she'd come for. That doesn't make any sense. After firing only one shot, Suzaha realized. Even a 32 should have more recoil than this. Oh no. She replaced the bullets with blanks? She fired again, but Kagari didn't flinch even for a moment. That's clever girl. That's... that's freaking ingenious! <laughs> At some point, all the bullets in Suzaha's gun had been swapped with blanks. That instant's, pa that instant's panic was all it took. Kagari reached out for the shirt on the floor in front of the shower room. Suzaha gave up on firing and flung the gun at Kagari. There was a dull thud as the hard barrel slammed into her neck. Caught off balance, she staggered before she could grab the shirt. It's not Kagari. She could hear Kagari's voice for the first time from within the helmet. Suzha jumped. She kicked the off balance Kagari as hard as she could with her toned, muscled legs. There was no time to hold back. Kagari went flying all the way to the edge of the room. That had to, that had to have broken a few ribs. Oh, fetch. Suzaha jumped toward her to continue her attack. But within terrifying speed, Kagari left off of the ground and charged at Suzaha. There wasn't enough time to come at a full stop. Ooh, no! 
No, 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 no. A sharp blade swept by, mere centimeters from her exposed abdomen. If she'd pulled back even a few tenths of a second later, the knife would have fatally sliced open her gut. Oh my! The blood rushed to Suzaw's head. The guy was serious. She was planning to kill her. There was no hesitation in her movements. Suzaw leaped back and searched for something she could use as a weapon. But the other guns were probably no different. There was a good chance they'd all had their ammo swapped with blanks, too. It was even possible that all her self defense knives had been taken, too. Which left. There were several knives carefully stored in the kitchen. Yuki had bought them over to use as teaching the other girls how to cook. But Kagari had evidently noticed them as well, and she was moving to keep Suzaha from reaching them. Fetch! Hey! Yeah, I know. Susan kept her distance from Kagari and slowly moved along the wall. Her comp competitive drive burned even brighter as she tried to come up with a way to overcome her disadvantage. She picked up her shirt from the front of the shower room and took the green keychain out of its pockets. Her fingers moved as if to crush it. She could see Kagari twitch. For the first time, she could detect a hint of emotion beyond the helmet. Uh, and in an instant, she threw it at Kagari's stomach. The keychain flew in a slow arc, like she was tossing it to a friend. It's something that lo they. If something they loved was thrown like that, even the fiercest warrior would instinctively reach out both hands to grab it. The guy was no exception. She carefully held her mother's memento in both her empty left hand and the right hand that still clutched the knife. Yeah. Using the slow arc of the keychain's camouflage, sees how I ran at her in a straight line. Her right fist connected hard with Kagari's stomach. Then her left arm smashed Gregory's head to the side. Get the knife, get the knife. Gregory's body fell to the ground, her right shoulder taking the brunt of the fall. Suzaha could hear the sound of her joint dislocating. The knife slipped from her grasp. Suzaha got behind her and mounted her, twisting her right arm mercilessly. This is one of those instances where it's like, it looks... interesting, but it's absolutely like a horrifying situation. At the same time, she slipped down her left arm and Kagari's neck and squeezed hard. Good grief. This picture. <laughs> but it's like, it's an intense moment of life and death struggle. It has nothing, there's nothing, like... There's nothing sexy about this at all. She could hear something like a moan from Kagari's throat. She could both hear and feel her bones in her arm and neck creaking. She's probably not even fully healed. <laughs> But Kagari picked up the knife on the floor with her left hand and once again tried to use it on Suzaha. Suzaha was forced to squeeze her arm and neck even harder. Oh. I clicked early. But Kagari didn't stop. If anything, she tried even harder to pull Suzaha away. Even in all the battles she'd been in, this much pressure on two different spots was enough to get even the toughest soldier to submit for or fall unconscious. Terrified, Suzaha squeezed even harder. At this rate, she wouldn't simply knock her out. She really would kill Kagari. But if she stopped, Kagari would kill her. What should she do? Then she heard a sad, weak voice from inside the helmet. It startled her, and she relaxed both her arms. No! But that was just what Kagari had hoped for. The knife came very close to cutting Suzuha's left arm. When she let go into dodge it, Kagari sh t shook her off and kicked her hips with both legs. She 
Suzaha was slammed back hard into the computer desk, and for a moment she couldn't breathe. She fell to the floor, and the printer and monitor crashed mercilessly into her naked body. Ouch. These things are freaking heavy. Come on, get up. She forced herself to stand up, gasping hard as she did so. Kagari's breathing was heavy too. Her right arm was pointed in an impossible direction and high, high hanging limp. She wouldn't be able to use it for a while, probably. But her left arm was still holding the knife. <laughs> Suza glared at Kagari's face. Not that she could see what it looked like behind that helmet. The two of them fell silent as they tried to catch their breath. The tension in the air was so thick that it was difficult to move a muscle. Sweat rolled down her forehead and into her eyes, but she still didn't blink as she waited for Kagari to make the next move. Oh no, it was the sound of the front door opening that broke their stalemate. Daru! Oh, no! No! Suzaha felt a chill run down her spine when she heard Atara's voice. No. She yelled at the exact same instant he turned on the lights. The sudden brightness was enough to make Suzaha flinch for an instant. Kagai was wearing a full-faced helmet, and that made all the difference. She leapt towards Atari just a moment before Suzaha. No. Kagai's black knife went up to his throat. Kagari spun around behind him, using Atara's huge body as a shield. Suzaha staggered toward him, gritting her teeth. Oh yeah. Oh my gosh. But Kagari remained silent as she headed outside the door with her hostage. And then in the next moment she shoved him forward. Itaro lost his balance and fell towards Suzaha. Suzaha fell to the ground underneath his weight. Oh, that's gotta be awkward. Itaro just barely managed to support himself with his arms and legs to keep from crushing her. Good man. Suzaha tried to shove him off using a little more force than she may have intended. But Atari was so huge it would have taken a moment to get up. She was getting away. She was getting away. She somehow managed to crawl out from under him and quickly tried to fall out to Kagari. Atari was still lying on the ground as he tossed the naked Suzaha shirt. He, she grabbed it and quickly put it on the ground outside. Well, I mean, you, you get the police called on you if you were running out naked. But when she looked around the street, the girl in the motorcycle leathers wasn't there. There was no way to even know where she'd gone. It would be dangerous to run around trying to find her now. There was a chance Atari would be attacked while she wasn't at the lab. Hitaro came outside as well. Gosh darn it. Hmm. The bruises and wounds were bad enough, but the pain that ached at her heart was the worst of all. あたしさ、あの子のことは本当に好きだったんだ。うん。I really sad. Like it's it's such a sad thing. Like I imagine it's like it's happened in like a lot of feudal wars and like 
civil wars where like you end up fighting against people who you cared about your family your friends I can't imagine what it must have been like to like find out that you had possibly been involved in the death of somebody who you cared about and knew in the past that had been a buddy or even an acquaintance that you were you know friends with in a way あたしもそんなあの子にいろいろなことを教えた。きっと妹みたいに思ってた。けど、あいつはもう。完全に敵だ。Yeah. Mm. Mm. なんかエロゲーの地上キャラっぽい格好になってるよ。ああ。え？お？Suzu uh. was caught completely off guard. True, her T-shirt only came down to just below her hips, roughly the length of a miniskirt. Her breasts were almost completely bare. The shirt's hem was turned up, and she felt exposed. まあ僕は地上物も結構いける口なんで、乱れた裸T-シャツというのもありといえばありですが。you be quiet, you. Matasoyatifuzakiru.Wokigashitakamashirinainuni.Benatara shook his head. Buxa, Saki and I who meet a savage at Takedo, Demokogar hits you Nakatan Janakanati. Arega, Moshi Boku no Kikimachigaja Nakatara. Yeah, that's a lot to gamble on, though. Itaro rubbed the part of his neck where the knife blade was. ナイフを突きつけられてた時、ほんの少しだけど聞こえたんだよ。What?何が？She's だからさ、決めつけるのはまだ早いんじゃね。お。父さん。ん。アイス。買ってきてくれた。バニラ。いや。うん、もちろん。食べたいな。私ちょっと疲れちゃった。And then she almost fell forward. Yeah. Tara managed to catch her before she hit the ground. Yeah, yeah, no problem. That was all she had the energy to say. She closed her eyes in her dad's arms, and her consciousness melted away. Well, that was traumatic. Fetch, man. Well, and there's another transition. Hope you enjoyed this freakishly long one. It's gonna be fun to edit too, because I got coughing, I had a bad intro I had to redo, and I have to decide if I need to blur anything in that or not. It's weird. When it comes to like broadcast quality, what's allowed and not allowed, it's tough. I'd argue that everything that was there was fine, and YouTube didn't have any problems with the Maho scene, but then again, I don't know. I don't know what I'm going to do about that. I don't want I don't want a guideline strike, that's for sure. But regardless, a lot of good mixed bag emotions in this episode. A lot of really interesting stuff to talk about too. A lot of reflection on like how the world's supposed to work and like what things mean and what people's actions mean and who they are. It's all still in flux. I don't feel like I know anything about uh Kagar Kagari at all, but like because she seems to be a paradox. Like, she's an insanely powerful killer. And I think that was her, I guess. Like, just wearing Moka's outfit. But she looks so much like Moka's 
in body shape too. Like, is that Moaka? It probably was. And if it's not, I wonder if Moaka is somehow related to her in a way. I don't know. There's something about that though. There's something, there's more going on there than, I, than meets the eye, but still. She seemed too emotional and she responded too like directly to the name drop and like to Suzaha. It seemed like that wouldn't be Moka, but I don't know. Anyway, regardless of that, there's a lot going on, man. Thank you guys so much for being here today. Thank you so much for joining me on this long episode. Hope you enjoyed it. I hope you enjoyed like having a bit more going down than usual and you know, we're getting we're getting to the real good stuff here like I can't believe they're remaking the time leap machine like that freaks me out. That's gonna that seems like a terrible idea. Uh, so we'll have to see how that turns out and what's gonna happen. But hopefully we'll get an we'll get an answer soon. But until that time, thank you so much for being here and spending this time with me. And until next week when we explore this again, I look forward to seeing you there. And you know, of course, as always, it's. Yeah, it's wonderful if you have other things on my channel you want to check out. Like, there's always some good recommendations I could make. Uh, it's usually something that pops up in the corner here sometime in there and now. And otherwise, you know, just continue to share these stories and experiences with me. Hopefully you've read them too, and you can experience them, like, through my eyes. But uh, I also just hope that you are enjoy, enjoy the time here enough with me that you just want to stick around. So for those of you that have, I really appreciate it. Thank you for joining me for this story as we continue to wind forward it's going to be a long one i can already tell a lot of parts like i'd be surprised if this didn't end up getting to 40 or 50 parts by the end but yeah we'll save all that for next time so thank you guys so much for being here today thank you so much for joining me and until the next video watching me or have to see me in next i'll see you there